All right. So let's see what our unknown sequences, what our 16S sequences. Again, just by looking at the sequence, we have no idea what it is, but we have on our hands free and absolutely amazingly powerful tools that will allow us to figure out what the organism is. So we're going to the National Library of Medicine, the NCBI, National Center for Biotechnology Information, and we're using the free tools for the analysis of our sequence. Again, this database is extremely powerful. Uh, it has many, many different functions, uh, the repositions of different sequences, genomes, literature. Um, many of you are probably familiar with the uh, uh, PubMed database, which is a part of this as well. So again, tons of different information. And what we are using it for is to analyze our 16S sequence. And again, there's many different types of analysis tools. We're just choosing one, which is the basic local alignment search tool or the BLAST tool. And you can see that there are different ways of performing a BLAST. So it depends what your starting material or starting sequence is. Do you start with a nucleotide sequence, like what we have, our 16S is definitely a nucleotide sequence, or did you get a protein sequence? So you can do a protein blast. It also depends on the question you're asking. Do you want to know what, for example, the mRNA you have isolated and sequenced is standing for, what protein it stands for, or what the nucleotide sequence is uh, for your protein if you, for example, want to clone and express it. So again, lots of different variations of the theme where you can ask different questions and get very easily many, many different answers. So you can also nowadays obviously blast genomes. There are many full, fully sequenced genomes in the database and there's other freestanding apps where you can, for example, examine your primers. You uh, do a primer blast, you can design them and also examine them because you want to make sure they're only binding to the sites of uh, interest for your amplification rather than to other parts of a genome in an organism. So lots of different opportunities, play around, click around. There's great help pages as well, which have videos on how to do it and your help section here. Again, lots of lots of videos, quick start case, uh, start sites, and so on. Um, always, always click around and see what's going on. But anyway, so what we want to do today is we want to figure out what this random A G T C letters are because our brain cannot decipher that. So we need help of the BLAST tool. So we go to nucleotide BLAST because we have our 16S sequence and 16S genes, they do not get translated into proteins. They are part of the ribosome and they're structural RNA molecules. So they stay as RNA and are a part of the ribosome. So don't, don't, use, um, don't use the BLAST X, you know, you cannot translate your 16S sequence. It will not be a protein. So stay with the nucleotide BLAST. So we can either go to the Eaton Bio or find our sequence, copy that, or alternatively, we could also go uh, and find a sequence in NCBI. So there's lots of databases in the NCBI. And for example, if we go to nucleotide, uh, we can retract and um, find lots of different 16S sequences if you're interested in the analysis. For example, if we are looking at Borrelia burgdorferi 16S, and if you don't know, but Borrelia burgdorferi is actually the causative agent of Lyme disease. So if I want to examine um, the 16S sequence of Borrelia, I can type it in into the nucleotide database and it will come up. So there's lots of other, obviously, sequences as well, but this is the Borrelia burgdorferi strain, a 16S ribosomal RNA. If I go to, I can scroll down and copy it, or I can also go to the faster button and have a faster formatted sequence in there. Faster format will be discussed in another video. So you can copy that as well, right? So lots of different ways of getting the sequence. You can get it from papers. You can get it from your own sequencing results. You can get it from the database. 
but what we want to know now is what we do with this database. So I copied the Eden Bio sequence and I just paste the sequence. That's number one. The second one is I want to, instead of using the standard database where all nucleotide, all RNA sequences are submitted, I want to get a subset of the database and uh, only search the rRNA, ribosomal RNA, uh, 16 or 18S sequences. And again, we're working with bacteria right now, so I'm just looking at the 16S database. And then we hit blast. So step one is paste, step two is to select your database, and step three is blast. And then we wait for a few seconds, and then we should get the results, what our unknown is. It's really pretty exciting to see, you know, from this random sequence here to actually figuring out what organism it's coming from. It's pretty magical, I have to say. So let's scroll down and it seems that our organism was a bacillus. The, definitely the genus is definitely for sure. Uh, the species we are not quite sure yet, but there's quite a lot of thuringiensis strains in there. And but. Uh, 16S is not always really great on species. It is really good on genus, but not so good. All right, so let's see what we found. So um, we definitely have lots of good hits. So the E value is that indicates the expected value. So um, how rare, how likely it is or what a chance it is. So if the E value is very, very small, the chance that it's just by random event is very little. So there's a really good chance that our sequence is very closely related to this bacillus uh, organism in the database. And you can see the query cover, most all of the nucleotides uh, are aligned. And let's look at the alignment quickly. So these are the alignments. So the query is the sequence we added. And then the subject is what the database found as closest relative. And you can see that they're basically identical sequences here. There's a couple of areas um, where there's a difference, but otherwise they're absolutely very, very similar organisms as well. And um, if, we were, if we were to go back to compare Bacillus thuringiensis and our Bacillus toyonensis, which I'm not familiar with, um, they're probably also very, very close related. So again, our hit is really good and it allows us to understand what's going on. We can look at the taxonomy and the bacillus, uh, bacilliaceae, and there are lots of different species of bacillus as well. So again, lots of information in this uh, database. Um, also, if you look at the accession number here, uh, you can trace further who submitted the information, what paper this particular sequence was published at or used at, and you get lots of information about it as well. And if you scroll down, you get the sequence. And again, same here with the faster, uh, faster format and also the graphics. It usually gives you an indication where in the gene the uh, gene is located as well. Uh, you can again, there's lots of other further sequences. You can print primers for this particular sequence, but again, in 16S, the primers are very fixed, and there's lots of other resources as well. So, again, we figured out what we have. So, we went from a random ATTC sequence to actually something that makes sense and told us what our organism is. So uh, I encourage you all to either use the sequence of the unknown or find a sequence in a database and execute that activity. 16S sequencing, se sequence alignment with BLAST, the basic local alignment search tool. And it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it's a very powerful tool in our, one of our first activities in our bioinformatics activity. Enjoy.